Hey guys, Adam Boys Guy DIY, and today I'm going to show you how to make a half lap joint. I know I have an upcoming project that's coming out, and you're going to need half lap joints on there. So whether you're using a table saw, a router, or a circular saw, these are all options to make this joint that's definitely going to strengthen your build. So check this out. The first thing I'm going to show you how to do is find the center of your piece of material. That way you know exactly how deep you need to cut. What you're going to do is measure the width out and then you're going to mark the corners here. You're going to mark an X and where they intersect here is the exact middle of your piece. Now I do have a center finding gauge here, but I'm going to show you this way. That way you can use any sort of straight edge, a speed square or whatnot, and you're going to find that middle and this is how deep you're going to cut. The first tool we're going to use is a sliding miter saw. You want to make sure it has a depth stop on it along with being able to slide and this will control how deep your cut is going to go. We already measured that out so it looks like I'm alright here with how I have things set. So I'm going to test this out on a piece of scrap wood first and I have a spacer there that way that my blade will go all the way back and I don't have to worry about not cutting deep enough. So we'll try this first one here, we'll see how it goes and then we'll take a look to see what it looks like. So it looks like the spacer was not quite big enough here. You'll see here in a second, but the blade went through, but did not go all the way through because the sliding motion didn't go back that far. It's a quick adjustment. I tried a couple times here and I set up another few pieces of scrap woods in between as a spacer and it looks like I'm good enough here and I'm going to start cutting. With this one, we'll run one more sample cut all the way through and we'll take a look to see what it looks like. I'm pretty sure on this one that everything turned out all right. So let's look here. Looks good there. Looks good there. So it looks like we're good to go to start cutting. So all we're going to do now is make tiny passes back and forth. We're going to start removing material. This is basically like a dado cut or a dado stack on a table saw, but we're using a slider miter saw instead. So I do this a couple times and I do it for both pieces. You'll notice it's not a perfect looking cut, so you will have to clean it up. So just to give you an idea, this is just a dry fit here, and I haven't done any cleanup yet or any sort of sanding, but it is a pretty tight fit. Uh, there are some gaps, but with a little bit of sanding, this will look great. Next up, we're going to use table saw. So I'm going to get a couple measurements here to see how wide and how tall my fence is. I'm going to cut a couple scrap pieces of wood, and then I'm going to start attaching them here. Don't worry about having to have a fancy sort of table saw like I have here with the saw stop. Uh, you can do this on anything as long as you have a fence. But I'm just going to tack it on here and make sure it's the right height and width. And then I'm going to take another scrap piece that's a little bit taller. I'm going to mark it out. And then I'm going to add a little more glue. And I'm going to add a couple more brad nails here to hold it all together. You could probably just use screws or you can use wood glue as well. Uh, this just went a little quicker for me using the brad nail as well. So make sure everything lines up and we'll see if it slides back and forth here in just a second. And looks pretty good. Next thing we're going to do here is add a stop block here. That way we can push and we can clamp and we don't have to worry about our piece of material sliding back when we're using saw. So I just attach that here with a couple of brad nails and glue and I think we're just about ready to cut. Don't overthink setting up your saw here. I just take a scrap piece that's going to be the same width of my hat flap and then I just raise my saw blade to right about the height and then it's time to start making some passes here. So take it slow. You'll notice I do have it clamped on for safety. That way it's not going anywhere and I make a pass and go right through and let's see how it turned out. It looks like everything has turned out pretty well. I got a pretty straight cut on here that I can repeat anytime I want to. So now I'm going to lower the blade and I'm going to make the cut to take off the rest of the scrap. Just make sure your miter gauge is set to zero here. Everything looks pretty good. So I'm going to take a couple passes and clean up this scrap. And I think we're going to be all right here. So I'm going to cut this first one here, set it up, and cut the second one as well. And once again, straight cuts, very repeatable. Once again, I'm going to do a dry fit here right after the cut. So you can see without any sanding or prep, looks pretty good. For the router, I'm going to show you how I did two pieces. I'm going to cut out these two sections right here and leave a space in the middle so I can go back with a miter saw and cut it in half. I also marked out where a spacer needs to be, so that way when the router hits the edge, it stops and doesn't cut any farther than I need to. So I have these little stop blocks set in place. I clamp it down, make sure my work surface is ready to go. And then I'm going to use the router in only one direction. So if I try to go left to right and right to left and all over, I'm going to have issues because the router is not going to be able to set against and you're actually going to start plunging at that point. So you want to keep working against the surface that you already have there and make sure your router is flat against. Make a bunch of passes here, make sure they're straight, make sure you're going in the same direction, and when you get that last cut there, it should look pretty good. Uh, you may have a little bit of tear out that you have to clean up, but otherwise it looks good. As I mentioned, I cut this in half with a miter saw, but take a look at this fit here. It looks very, very clean. 
Alright guys, so now that I've run through everything here, I ran through three methods. Uh, I did not do four and I'll tell you why here in a second. So I used the miter saw and that is a sliding miter saw. That's a big um, important factor here is you have to be able to slide back and forth to make those dado cuts. Uh, I also used the router and I also used the table saw. Uh, I did not use the circular saw and the reason for that is it's essentially the same thing as using the miter saw. You're just going to kind of set up a stop and you're going to do pass, 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 pass and then anything that's still left there you can chisel out or knock out with a hammer and clean up sanding wise. So Pretty simple uh, for that sense, you just have to make sure you're cutting on a safe surface. Uh, in my opinion, the best one to go with is a table saw, because uh, the table saw jig like that that I made, it makes it super easy, a lot more safe, especially if you're not comfortable with the table saw. Uh, the router actually had the best cut and the best fit, uh, but if you're not comfortable with the router, it's very important that you, uh, you get comfortable with it, you're safe with it, um, because the router can do a lot of damage if you're not paying attention. So, uh, in my opinion, go with the table saw. If you have a table saw, it's made out of scrap wood, very simple, and it's something you can use over and over again. So, that's it guys. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, that's Lazy Guy DIY, and make sure you head on to the website at LazyGuyDIY.com. Thanks.